When is a TV show supposed to end? This is a question I often refer to reflecting on long-running TV shows, or shows that were completed in just the right amount of years, wrapping up all the loose ends in an appropriately linear manner. The opposite of this formula is a show that doesn't last long enough, which could somewhat equate to personal opinion. I am sure there are plenty of short-lived TV shows deserving of a full revival, but one that sticks out to me personally, with loose ends awaiting a neat conclusion, is the original Teen Titans animated series from 2003. Critically acclaimed as one of Cartoon Network's most popular animated properties, the original Teen Titans series is a superhero cartoon which is based on the 80s comic book rendition of the characters by Marv Wolfman and George Perez, known as the New Teen Titans. The show managed to retain the target demographic of childhood audiences, but also expanded its outreach with its mature themes and character exploration. Lasting for only four years, Teen Titans refined these characters for a general audience, which allowed a casual fan of animation or superheroes to find empathetic values in the relatable situations conceived within the series. That is not to say the show was without its cartoony quirks, which is something we will cover in more detail momentarily. Didn't see that coming. Unfortunately, the show was confirmed as cancelled, wrapping up with a conclusive movie in September 2006 titled Teen Titans Trouble in Tokyo. Trouble in Tokyo is an extended departure away from the usual formula each episode provided. With this conclusion, you would surely expect all the loose ends to be neatly wrapped. Departing from the series with a feeling of satisfaction. Sad because it had to come to a close, but happy because it happened. No. The final episode of the fifth season titled Things Change aired in 2006 serving as the final episode of the entire series. Surprisingly, this has a cliffhanger ending. I can only speculate that this was possibly for or intended to be hinting at the Trouble in Tokyo movie. Sadly, this was not the case. Analyzing the final episode, I found this story to be somewhat unnecessary following the final confrontation with the Brotherhood of Evil. That is not to say this episode is bad in any way, far from it. The episode interestingly calls back to the season 2 story arc known as the Judas Contract revolving around the character of Terra. Her ending is set in stone, quite literally, as she is regarded as a hero for saving the city from a volcanic eruption. The episode divides Beast Boy from the main characters as they hunt an unknown enemy with the power of absorption, allowing it to transform into the materials it touches. Sticking with Beast Boy for the majority of this episode, he begins to see glimpses of Terra, and nobody believes him. This infers that Terra is perhaps not real, and therefore could possibly be a figment of his imagination. In the sequences following, Beast Boy talks to Terra and tries to convince her of what she formerly was, of which she has no memory or interest in learning about. I quite like the symbolism used in this episode, a literal divide between Beast Boy and Terra, such as in this sequence where the frame is obscured by a school gate, and both characters are separated placed on either side of the screen. Beast Boy's internal conflict is well represented in how fondly he remembers the good times with Terra, and how he revisits specific locations knowingly associated with her. I really enjoyed the Hall of Mirrors sequence where Slade Wilson appears for the final time. He coldly requests for Beast Boy to leave Terra alone, of which of course he refuses to do so. The final scene in the episode elicits a lot of evocative dialogue. Beast Boy tries one last time to make Terra remember who she formerly was. But just as the episode title states, things change. I found this episode to be a metaphor for moving on and letting go of the past. Beast Boy attempts to rekindle the past in the form of Terra, but since Terra does not remember him, he has no choice but to move on and allow Terra to find her own path. There are multiple hints at this division, and when the visual separation of Beast Boy and Terra is more apparent, it just further hints at how she may just be a part of his imagination. Things change, and just like this ending, Teen Titans was not going to be around forever. Mr. and Mrs. Network, I have some bad news. Your beloved TV show has suffered serious brain damage due to a starvation of oxygen to the brain. I'm afraid the hard-hitting narratives and character building is no more. On the plus side, fart jokes and twerking are now popular, so we have a lucrative alternative suggestion for you. 
Testing the waters for a Teen Titans reboot? A light-hearted comedy series titled The New Teen Titans became part of DC Nation in 2012. This was a series of experimental shorts encapsulating simplistic comedy delivered by chibi-style animated versions of the original beloved characters. I never planned on covering this show on the channel, but I suppose it is topical. Teen Titans Go! is a spin-off series created in 2013, utilising the original characters and voice actors from the original series. Unfortunately, the delivery of this show is nothing short of a dumbed-down hobbledy-hoy cartoon for a modernised audience, intended for easy viewing. Arguably, the original Teen Titans had some extremely bizarre quirks, borderline TTG style. One of the worst episodes being Season 2's Fractured, featuring Larry. Larry. Hello! The simplicity of TTG is achieved through extremely short episode lengths and very little to a complete lack of narrative as a whole. I have seen a handful of these episodes, purposefully choosing the best rated and worst rated on IMDb for comparative measure, and then some in between. The following episodes I felt were worth mentioning in this critique of the show, which did elicit some form of reaction from me, positive or negative. 40%, 40%, 20% was my favourite out of the few episodes that I watched, and is the highest rated episode of the show. The premise of this episode was silly, but comparatively in a good way. Cyborg enjoys a song from the mid-2000s to a point of obsession, under the guise of Music Shall Transform You, which was a throwaway line taken very literally. This evokes a series of trippy but well-animated punk-style visuals where the record Night Begins to Shine by B.E.R. gains its momentum. Similarly, so does Cyborg, finding his inner strength from listening to this record. This episode was pretty much harmless and was far removed from the repetitive humour I was expecting and as seen in some of the other episodes. Although not necessarily as terrible as the next few mentions, the overbite feels like an attempt at humour gone disastrously wrong. The unsuspecting viewer tunes into the Titans trying to dance, as Raven summons a dance demon to help instruct their moves, leaving behind the temptation of forbidden dances they are advised not to learn. This advice is ignored, resulting in Raven being forced to save the Titans from backup dancer enslavement. The narrative is predictable and pointless, thriving off the dancing is about enjoying yourself trope, which I wouldn't really call a life lesson for younger audiences, plus I really do dislike how inconsistent Raven's character becomes. Purposefully trying to resemble highbrow comedy. The fourth wall backfires as an episode, insulting those who enjoyed the original anime style series. The villain control freak reveals how the existence within the show is in fact nothing short of a poorly rebooted cartoon. How, you may ask? By allowing the reboot to watch and enjoy the original, even to a point of mocking those who wish for a sixth season. Like many episodes of TTG, this episode is more about pushing fans away than actually winning people over. The creators have a significantly flawed logic of creating a cartoon which purposefully segregates viewers of a certain age, capturing its demographic of small children lacking the necessary intelligence to change the channel. Waffles is by far the worst episode I witnessed which I did actually skip through because of how monotonous it became. Cyborg and Beast Boy keep repeating the word waffles as a game. Whoever stops saying the word waffles is the loser, with a complete lack of story where even the villain is just as annoyed as the viewer. I feel most would gain far more entertainment from watching a puddle evaporate. Although I can appreciate that I am certainly not the target demographic for this reboot, with that notion aside, I can honestly say this is one of the worst animated shows I have ever seen. And what continuously amazes me is the creators know the majority of viewers despise this creation. Juxtaposing this, the creators of the show actually embrace this fact. There are many inside jokes aimed at purposefully breaking the fourth wall. Knowing the original series ending was not conclusive and that this reboot undermines the original characters. This structure is literally an amalgamation designed to piss off any of the previous demographic of viewers. As far as any business model goes, this surprisingly works to their advantage. 
With cheap animation and an unfathomed popularity with younger children, Teen Titans Go has retained a longer airtime and viewership than the original show. It also received a theatrical movie in 2018, which actually did very well for itself. I was also surprised about the end credits scene teasing a possible return for the original characters. Could this have really been hinting at a sixth season? No, of course not. Instead of a sixth season, we instead received a straight to Blu-ray and DVD movie. Teen Titans Go vs Teen Titans is a unique blend for satirizing the hatred for this reboot, while also providing nostalgia goggles for fans of the original series. The film was released in late 2019 and overall, I found it to be tolerable. I purposefully wanted to see how the original characters would be handled in comparison to the original series, and they hold up. Then again, it is extremely easy to portray maturity next to these McDonald's toy looking characters. The film was handled well for its generic structure. It purposefully played the teamwork trope between unaccustomed common enemies against a mutual threat. The music was entertaining, along with the segments replicating the original anime-inspired structure of the original 2003 series. The combination of both Teen Titan worlds was surprisingly well integrated, while also creating yet another multiverse across comic book characters. I also really enjoyed the focus on Raven, who was unusually absent from the movie trailer. This does now make sense in retrospect with the involvement of her father. Speaking of which, my other large complaint if you will, is how the existence of this film somewhat undermines the fourth season of the original Teen Titans show, while also belittling Trigon as a character to the stature of a kid's meal toy. Thankfully this film was very forgettable, but I do feel is worth at least one watch even out of morbid curiosity. <coughs> At the moment, there is sadly no definitive answer stating whether Teen Titans will return for a sixth season. Surprisingly, the show does remain topical with a variety of media outlets hypothesizing about the show's return. This usually comes in the form of awareness, purposefully provoking the collective fanbase into sharing things such as online petitions, along with continuing theories piggybacking off the unfathomable success of Teen Titans Go. Although perhaps just speculatory since it is not necessarily confirmed, the plans for the sixth season would have played out revolving primarily around Starfire. Her sister, Blackfire, was supposed to be the main antagonist with an alien invasion star plot consuming the season. Terra would have also returned in full form, recognizing her powers and therefore resolving the long overdue season 5 cliffhanger finale. Likewise, Slade would have also returned in the flesh this time, following his appearances in the fourth season. Making a couple of tie-ins to the popular season 2 What If style episode How Long Is Forever, Supposedly, there were hints towards Robin becoming Nightwing and Raven accepting the White Raven incarnation of her character towards the end of this season. Season 6 was supposed to also inherit a darker tone for the series, similar to the fourth season which is my personal favourite. I feel even in the present this could still work to the advantage of a reboot, since the show would therefore be aimed at an older demographic of fans, the original fans who grew up with the series. Personally, I hope we do receive some kind of closure to this fantastic animated show. Whether this is in the form of a sixth season, or a conclusive movie retaining the original art style to wrap up the loose story threads of the original Teen Titans at once and for all. Luckily, there are still open options available for continuation, and with the original voice cast carrying over to the reboot, I feel this does increase the chance for more to come in the near future. Thank you for watching my video essay on the possibility of Season 6 of Teen Titans being conceived. I really do hope you enjoyed. If you haven't seen the original Teen Titans cartoon from 2003, I would highly recommend checking it out. For those that may have been upset or offended about my criticisms of Teen Titans Go, these are just my opinions. And if you really enjoy Teen Titans Go, that is absolutely fine. Power to you for finding enjoyment in something that I personally cannot find any enjoyment in whatsoever. If you enjoyed, please do leave me a like down below. Let me know in the comments how you feel about Teen Titans returning for a sixth season. And if you did enjoy this video, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, DVD Review Studios, for more upcoming videos.
you threatening me? <laughs> 